y'all. So it has been like three months. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the look that I've been doing the most recently. I got this palette and I pretty much only ever use it for this look. Occasionally I'll actually add some of the shimmers in because the shimmers are actually really pretty. To prep my face, I'm going to be using the Mario Badescu Cucumber and Green Tea Spray. And I'm just going to prep my face by spraying it like, kind of like all over. And while that's setting in, I kind of have been doing the skincare routine. And um, I can't even find the front of it. Uh, I'm using the Drunk Elephant C Firma as kind of like a little base. And this is, will be my skincare before I go in with the rest of my makeup. So now that I have my face, kind of like my skincare and everything, uh, I usually prep my eyelid with the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. Um, I switch back and forth between fair and light because this is really cute. Between fair and light because uh, I had a light once upon a time, or whichever one's the lightest, I think it's fair actually. And I accidentally bought it instead of my normal shade, but for an eyeshadow primer, it really doesn't matter as much. Um, so today I'm gonna be using the Natasha Denona palettes. And um, to start off with, I'm using the, um, why am I, Safari palette. Okay, I was like, why am I blanking on this name? I'm really only using like one shade from this palette and it's just to set it. It's this shade right here, Aya maybe? I'm, you know how trash garbage I am at pronouncing things. And all I'm doing is just setting down this entire base with this little light skin color shade for me. And that's really all I'm doing with this palette in this tutorial. What I end up starting off with when I go into the Natasha Denona palette is I start off with this shade right here. It's the only transition shade up at the top and it's called Aria. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up Aria on my uh, GH Morphe brush, the GH31. And I'm just going to flick Aria through this crease kind of high like I kind of like barely started off really light and then I worked my way in. Alright, and picking up this crown brush, these are some of the best brushes, I think. Oh, it's not even crown, it's Moda Pro. It's that, um, gosh, I don't even remember the name of it. I just remember getting this in a BoxyCharm. And this is their Crease BMX 430 brush. It's the perfect crease brush. It's really fluffy, but it's kind of pointed at the end and tapered, so you can really get in there. And the next shade that I usually go in with is Sandstone. And that's right here on the bottom and I just start working my way from crease color until it's slowly darker just sort of like either fluffing it out or making it a little bit more um, picking up like more of like a pencil brush when we get towards the end but it's really just kind of layering all of these together and making sure that I leave mainly like the whole lid space like I'm not coming down these corners really at all except it's slightly blended at the end, but not by much. I'm starting in the middle of my eye and then working my way out. That way the main pigment hits that middle and then it's focused on this outer edge 
I'm going pretty high up to my brow bone just because I have really hooded eyes and otherwise you just can't really see it that well and I want my lid to be pretty free of that and then I like barely flick in the rest of the color there at the end. And I do want to say these are some of the best eyeshadows I have ever used, hands down. Um, they just, they blend themselves, they're highly pigmented, and they're just, they're just really, really good eyeshadows. And I never notice my makeup looking any different at the end of the day as far as my eyes. Like nothing breaks down or anything, which is good because you're paying like a fortune for all these palettes. So they should be doing that. And you can get kind of messy out here because we're just going to clean that up with a rag here in a minute, or a wipe, I mean. Um, and now for the next brush, I'm picking up my Luxie Taper Blending 229 brush. It's a little bit denser. It's not quite as pointed, and, but it's still kind of fluffy. And what I'll end up doing is I'm going to pick up the second to last shade, which is Teak, which is right here. And all of these shades look very similar but it's just like slightly darker as you go down. And I wanna say this one might be a little warmer, but they're all like these really pretty like khaki browns. And once at the very end, once you put out all the skin together and everything, it starts looking really cool toned and it just looks really pretty, especially with brown eyes. Although you could do this look on pretty much any color eye and it would still look good. Sorry, I'm falling off my chair here. <laughs> so I'm just picking up Teak tapping off the excess and this one I'm actually going to be dragging down closer so I'm actually going to focus this more like actually in my real crease instead of kind of like faking it up here and I'm just going to focus kind of like barely that edge of the brush in and just flick it out and then slightly buffer it in and just keep blending and blending until it's just like completely seamless so you either go window shield wiper motions or you kind of like buff it in. Um, so this is the brush I'm using. It's very small and tapered. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into the shade log. I don't know why that made me laugh. <laughs> it's just a funny name for a shadow. It's this really deep dark brown. Now I used this the other day and it actually ended up turning almost black on my eye. So I'm going to be really, really um, gentle with like how much I'm using. And I actually did want to do another look with this. Um, I just wanted to use kind of like the blues in it and the blues and the gold just because I think it'd be really super pretty. So I think I might do that for more like a New Year's Eve look. But anyway, let me know if you would like to see that. But I'm going to pick up Log just barely on this brush. I mean like really tapping it off because I don't want it to look too dark but I still want to add a little bit more definition in that crease. Just the tiniest bit. I'm gonna only put on that much, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye, and then I'm gonna get a clean brush and then blend it out. That way I know I'm not adding any more pigment than this. This is all the pigment that I wanna work with. It's just that one little bit. Now I'm gonna pick up that um, Moda Pro blending brush that we had before, and I'm not taking anything else on it. It just has remnants of the lash shadow that we had. And I'm just going to buff that in window shield wiper motions back and forth and just really blend it out. But really making sure that's kind of defining that crease area and really kind of darkening it up. Because once we put on our whole sculpted face and everything, it's going to dull down the eyes. Which is why I usually go a lot heavier on the eyes. Especially with brides. Because once you put on your face products and everything else and you go outside and you take pictures all of the pictures and all the lights and everything will wash you out. It will not look as dark as it does in person. 
So this is kind of like my natural smoky eye right now. This is my contoured look that I keep doing. I kind of did it one day. The next day I was obsessed with it and did it again. In the past like three weeks, I have pretty much only worn this look. I've worn like maybe two other looks, but they've been like ridiculously simple. For some reason I haven't been into like crazy cake facing just because I haven't gone to a lot of places that would require that. So we're done with this palette for now. So I'm going to move on to the face, and I've been obsessed with mixing this with anything. I just like using this and a matte foundation, because that makes sense. Um, I'm using the Spotlight Physicians Formula. This is their Illuminating Primer. This is a great dupe for the Becca Backlight Primer. And I'm just going to, on the back of my hand, just pump some out and then rub it all over my face. It's pretty thick and a little goes a long way and it will make your hands super like shimmery shiny. For foundation, I'm going to be using the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation. It's a full coverage moisturizer which it's probably more full coverage than almost any foundation that I have. Just put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm using the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill JH03 brush. It's this really fat blending foundation brush and it's really really good it blends like no other and funny story I had my coffee out the other day <laughs> and I think I posted this on my Instagram story so if you don't follow me you should it'll be linked down below and <laughs> occasionally I'll share funny things that happen to me and um, one of the things that happened is I had my coffee out and it was right beside my brushes and I have like little cups and containers that I put my brushes in and I missed and it fell right directly into my coffee and so it laid out for like a week until I cleaned it which is disgusting and if you're wondering why on earth I'm using this foundation this is a f it's light medium so it's a little bit darker than I am naturally but I still have remnants of my self tan that I put on for Thanksgiving so that's why I'm using that um, I've been using my kind of like beauty blender look-alike from Physicians Formula and I'll just kind of like bat it over my skin and really blend it in, get up closer because with a brush I tend to swipe it all over my eyelids and then I've like completely ruined my whole eyelid because I like destroyed it. And if you have a lot more fallout than me, or not like fallout but like you get out farther, you can clean it up with a makeup wipe. I just didn't because I didn't have a whole lot, it'll just kind of blend in with my foundation be fine but anyway so um, for concealer today what I'm gonna end up doing is actually mixing sand and light which are both from the Maybelline fit me collection and I just collection I don't know why I decided to be weird and call it a collection but anyway I'm just gonna kind of dot underneath my eyes because sometimes this can be a little bit too dark when I have like my tan shade on because I'm really not that tan right now. It's my body's kind of like coming off of the tan from a couple days ago. But if I mix it in with this, it turns out pretty perfect. But if I just use it by itself, then it becomes a little bit too light. It's kind of this weird like in between that I just don't like. <laughs> so, I'm just going to take my little fake beauty blender. This is my real technique sponge. So I use my beauty blender a whole lot for like my actual like contour and everything. So what I end up doing is I'll just kind of like buffer this concealer in, but I start in the middle and I work my way in first. I don't just go straight out because when I go straight out, it usually takes the majority of the product out there with me. And then I'm left with not much coverage where all my uh, dark baggy, dark baggy. <laughs> Dark bags are under my eyes. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's been like seven years since I've last done this. I've lost it. I'm no longer a profesh. So what I usually do for my cream contour, because when I do this look, I pretty much always cream contour. Um, I like cream contouring and then putting a powder on. I hardly will ever just do the normal just powder just because I feel like there's a little bit more depth that gets added in. So anyway, and it just looks so much more blended. 
So I'm using the e.l.f. cream contour kit if I can ever open it and I just mix these two shades. I use this only on my nose, the lighter shade, and then I use this only underneath my lip, but then I mix the two for like underneath my cheekbone and kind of like all up around my temple. And I almost always use this Morphe brush. It was part of a kit, it doesn't have a number on it. It's just like a black and white Morphe brush, but it's kind of like one of those nice little paddle brushes. I find that this picks up the most product and helps me really just stamp it where I need to put it. And the good thing about this contour kit is, I think I just rubbed that in my hair, so that's cool. The good thing about this contour kit is, even though it looks a lot darker, it's really not that dark. So this going on looks like I'm just smearing my face with chocolate, but it's gonna blend out super pretty. And I just do my nose a little bit on my temple and then just like slick right up underneath my cheekbones and um, I'll take the end portion of my beauty blender and I doesn't really matter which one I start with I typically will start with the spots that I want to be the most blended out just because I don't want to sit for too long What I end up doing for my cream contour, and I've spoken about this a couple times before, I'll start in the front and then I'll, it's almost like I'm kind of like rolling it up so that way it's kind of like sculpting out my cheek versus, because you never want to swipe down. When you swipe up, it blends it up and it tends to look more like the shadow because like when you think about it, a shadow is strongest, it's darkest area and then it kind of feathers up. If you start feathering it down, it's going to start looking like your cheek is like hollow and sagging. So when you start in the middle and then push the product back, back towards your hairline this whole time and then slightly up, it's mimicking a real shadow and it's also going to make sure you don't drag it in too far because no one has hollows of their cheek to here, like no one does. So it doesn't look real and it's going to make you start looking a little bit muddy by the time you're done. And now to make sure that all of that is set, I use my number seven translucent powder. This is my favorite powder from the drugstore. I feel like no one ever really talks about it. Besides, I've noticed Nicole uh, Renee Cutler has started uh, really liking it. And I'll just pat this underneath my eyes. And I've noticed too, with me wearing like a tanner shade, this has a slight lighter cast, like it's not I don't think it gives you flashback, but if you leave it on too long, it's gonna end up looking a little bit too ghostly. Like, the powder will pack on pretty dang quick. So I'm packing in the most powder in the areas where it typically breaks down on my face the most. I have combination skin, so pretty much just my T-zone is like the only point that's like ever oily. And it's pretty much the only place where something ever breaks down. It always breaks down around my nose, in between my brows, just kind of on those like weird crevices on my face. So I usually will kind of pat the powder in with a beauty blender first on those like main areas that I want to specially keep matte. And then I'll take the rest of the powder with a big fluffy brush. This is the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill GH1 or GH01. And I'll kind of stamp the powder on if I have a lot on my brush. And then I'll just brush it in. So I'll stamp. And then buff it over. if you buff it over first and like you don't even stamp you're actually losing a lot of the product and you're gonna have to go in and use up even more and there's really no point in wasting all that product if you stamp it first it'll adhere to that dewy foundation 
or wet foundation, whatever you want to call it, and will actually like stick to it, and then you can kind of like fluff it over. That way you don't use up that much product, and you get to save a little bit of money because you're not using up the entire canister every single time. So the next thing that I normally will do is I will start doing my contour. <laughs> I'm stuck. Okay. And um, the contour, I start doing the contour first because it usually looks a lot more blended when I add my bronzer on top of that. So I'm using the IBY Highlight and Contour Palette. This is one of my favorite palettes. And it's pretty much as expensive as like the Anastasia or any of those. It might be a little bit cheaper, but not by much. But I really like it, and this is the one that I've preferred. And I'll just use, I actually use this, this Wet n Wild brush, it's like a dollar or two. And I'll just take this powder, I'll kind of trace out my out outline where I did my cream contour, and then I'll flip it so that it's like the wider, fatter end. And I'll just kind of flick it, not flick it, but like blend it like this. So I set down my base by tapping between the two shades right here and right here. I lightly brush over those areas. I'll kind of focus a little bit more up here. And once I've gone up underneath that cheekbone where that cream contour was, then I'll flip it over and then just start really like rubbing it in and working it in. I do not like the super harsh contour line. I don't think it looks natural. I don't think it even looks good in pictures. It might make you look more sculpted, but then you start looking a little um, stage makeup y. And I kind of barely set any powder over this portion because it's really easy to make your nose look really um, bad. <laughs> And if you contour the bottom of your lip, you can do it with an eyeliner, an eyeliner, a lip liner, or you can do it with all sorts of other things. But for the most part, when you do that, it will actually make your bottom lip look a little bit thicker, and it's an easy way to get surgery on your lip without actually having to get surgery. That way your lips look a lot more full and plump, and you'll start kind of noticing it when you, um, in pictures and stuff, you'll just notice that slight difference. So after I do my contour, I'll usually switch over to my bronzer, and I have been using the heck out of this. I bought a backup, and I'm glad I did because I am so close to just taking this thing out. So I switch back and forth. My favorite brush ever is from Vanity Planet. It was stuck in some of the big brush kit that I got once upon a time when Kristen Johns, re when Kristen Johns recommended it. But um, this one is also really good. This one's like a fluffier, denser brush. So you're going to get a lot more blending. You're just not going to get as much color as that one. So this is a JH02 brush by Morphe and Jaclyn Hill. And I just kind of fluff it all in there. Now you're not going to get as precise, so I wouldn't be using a bronzer that's like crazy a different color. Some people like to contour and bronze at the same time. I don't. Blush with this look, I've been using like a really natural rosy tone. This pretty much goes with everything. It's not, it's not really, it's not cool tone, but it's not super warm either. It's kind of like a really nice in between. This is by Bella Pierre, and this is uh, their Mineral Blush in Desert Rose. It has a slight shimmer to it. So it actually looks super pretty and natural. So it kind of leaves your cheeks like a little bit glowing without being like glittery or shimmery. And I'm using the Morphine Jaclyn Hill JH05 brush. You want your blush to look a little bit more natural. Put some on your nose. Because whenever you see somebody who's been outside in the sun, their nose is not just randomly tan and their cheeks are the only things that are flushed. Their nose is flushed as well. So it looks a little bit more realistic and people don't just look at you and they're like, oh, they're definitely... 100% wearing blush like if you wore this with a tanner look and you started getting those like peachier warmer tones like you would Kind of see more like when you get you know a sunburn or a tan or something it starts looking really natural like that So I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna do my brows and I'm using my My convertible brow my trusty 
believe this is the Brown Hair 02. This is their convertible powder and pomade duo. And because I've changed my hair color, I can actually get away with this like ready taupey shade. Totally does not look red here, but if you see it out of it, it looks more like this color. Just a little bit more brown. And so I'm just gonna do my brows and I'll be right back. So now that I have my brows on and everything, kind of my next step that I'll usually do is I've been using the heck out of this Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. This has one of the best sprays that I've ever used. It's so good. So what I end up doing first is, it kind of depends on what order, it really doesn't matter because regardless, if you do it before your mascara, you won't have any problems. If you do it after your mascara, wetting something with like a spray or anything like that is just going to make it, um, it's going to make it wet unless you have like waterproof mascara on and even then it's still kind of activating it a little bit. So make sure that when you spray your face that you're not like opening up your eyes real wide with your mascara on or else you'll tattoo all of it to the top of your lid. So I'll take some of this and I just start spraying and just kind of letting everything just melt in. I'm picking up my Natasha Denona Gold Palette one more time and I'm just going in with the shades Sandstone and Teak to these two bottom shades and these two I'm just blending and blending and just really making sure they're like really penciled in. I'm going to be using these brushes that I got in my BoxyCharm. These are from Luxie. This is the 141 Mini Round. They're like these really pretty um, holiday brushes that they came out with. So I'm going to pick up Sandstone first. Now because my um, spray and everything has settled a little bit, but it's still a little bit damp, I'm going to go in with the Morphe Highlighter in Spark. I have been obsessed with this. This is one of like my most favorite highlighters now. I just feel like it goes with pretty much every look that I've been doing. And every time I don't wear it, I'm like, I really miss that. Okay, so I totally started doing my mascara and then I realized that I hadn't even finished the eyes. So my last step is going back in with that Aya shade from the Safari palette. And I just pick up the same like flat brush that I did before. And I'm gonna pick up that same like taupey skin color shade. And I'm just gonna barely tap this on the lid. And this is the finished look. This is what I've been doing pretty much non-stop for the past, I don't even know how long. I did a little bit darker on my eyes for um, Thanksgiving, I believe. But pretty much this is the look that I've been going to on the daily. I just really like the whole matte eye thing. I like how everything's very tan, nudish. It's a little bit different than what I normally do because I'm pretty much always doing warm, smoky eyes or I'm doing uh, like really bright golds or that's pretty much the only two things that I ever do and then every now and then I'll do a turquoise or purple look so excuse me this gummy bears are coming back up so <laughs> if you like this video please give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment if you would asking you know just kind of like telling me like what else you want to see because I haven't been on here in so long y'all leave me some love down below and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!